Hi hackers, today I share with you three ways to escalate the severity of an XSS vulnerability. To be more specific, we'll review how to escalate reflected cross-site scripting and self cross-site scripting. Before we start, I want to thank Backcrowd for sponsoring this video. Backcrowd is a hunter-friendly platform. It's the platform where I found the most bugs and participate the most. You can find programs of all kind and choose the type of target you like. You also have access to Backrub University to level up your skills. Thank you, Backrub. If you don't remember the difference between reflected cross-eye scripting and self cross-eye scripting, let me explain it in less than a minute. Reflected cross-eye scripting is, as the name suggests, an XSS that reflects some type of content in the server's response. If you use a payload that executes JavaScripts in the input being reflected, you have found a reflected XSS. For this, we usually use the classic alert one payload. It's only reflected, it's not stored. If you report this issue with just alert one and the program accept it, they'll likely consider its moderate severity a P3. Self XSS, on the other hand, is an XSS that you can only execute on yourself. It can happen in many ways. For example, you might upload data into your user profile that triggers XSS, but no one else can access it. You also can't make a victim upload that type of data. You can only load it your, for yourself. That's why it's called self XSS. Although you call combines a victim to upload it using social engineering. We know that's out of scope for bug bounty programs. This issue is usually considered informative. Let's get started. But a little disclaimer. The methods I share to escalate the severity of this type of XSS will require you to spend a little more time and research on the XSS you have already found. As hunters, it's very common for us to find something and report it right away, but with a bit of patience, I assure you that you can earn better bounties and even create beautiful bug chains to share with your friends. The first, showing the impact of a reflected XSS on your target. Let's say you found a reflected XSS and you are ready to report it with an alert one, but you realize you haven't really created a proof of concept to show that the JavaScript execution that's more than just pop up a one. So, does this actually have any real impact? If the program doesn't specify that reflected XSS is out of scope, it's probably a valid bug and you will get a reward. However, it will likely be rated as moderate severity. On the other hand, in my experience, if the program says that XSS is out of scope, but you can demonstrate an account takeover, there is a 90% chance they'll consider it high severity, a P2. Some programs aren't interested in an alert want, but if you can show real impact, your report might still be valid even if they've marked excesses as out of scope. Here's an example of how to show that reflected XSS has more impact. If cookies don't have the HTTP only flag and the content security policy is weak or missing, you can still session cookies with a cross-site scripting attack. To do this, you simply need to create a payload that sends the session cookies to a server you control. Here's an example from a report where I stole session cookies like this. What if cookies are protected? If cookies have the HTTP only flag and you can't steal them, check what type of information is stored 
in local storage. If there's sensitive information, you can demonstrate the impact using that instead. You might be surprised to find everything from a user's personal data to a valid session token. If you can't find any sensitive info in local storage either, think creatively. You can execute JavaScript, so there's probably something you can use to escalate your target. Be creative. Self XSS to a store XSS with cross-site request forgery. This is the second one technique. I learned this technique for Vicky Lee in her book Backbounty Bootcamp. Highly recommend it. Imagine you found a self XSS in a profile field that no one else can see. Let's say it's a field called notes that's visible only to you. You insert the payload there and the XSS triggers, but only for you. That's the definition of self-XSS. If you report it, it will probably be marked as informative. The best approach is to note it down and think of ways to turn it into an XSS with more impact. Convert that self XSS into a store XSS and you could achieve high severity, a P2. One way to do this is by escalating that self XSS using a cross site request forgery attack. Now imagine you discover that modifying the nodes field isn't protected against cross site request forgery. It makes sense that they skipped the protection because it's a field that seems to have no real impact. What harm could there be in letting someone add nodes to other users profile? Maybe at best it could be rated as low severity P4. But since it doesn't use a cross-site request for a token, and there's no same site policy to block cross-site request forgery, it's exploitable. Here's an example post request to modify the nodes field. No, you can create a script very similar to the previous one, but this time inside an HTML page that executes the cross-site request forgery and injects the XSS into the node field. It would look like this. And here is the payload. Down, you now have your attack. Here are the steps. You send a link with your cross-site request forgery to the victim. For the proof of concept, you can attach the HTML file to your report. It's not necessary to host a server for the cross-site request forgery, but explain that in a real scenario, the exploitation would involve hosting it on a server. Second, the victim opens the link. The cross-site request forgery does its job and injects the XSS payload into the nodes field. The next time the victim logs in, their cookies will be sent to your server. This is important. Remember, as we mentioned in the previous attack, if you can't steal cookies, look for other types of sensitive information you can extract or other action you can perform with your payload. Be creative. Three. XSS plus cache poisoning to store XSS. Here I show you two examples. Pay close attention step by step. Example 1 using a reflected XSS and turning it into a store XSS via web cache poisoning. Imagine we have a reflected XSS that looks like this. In this case, we could report this reflected XSS. Perhaps if we can steal cookies, we might achieve an account takeover, which will be rated as high severity. But what if we try to escalate it into a store XSS, which could be rated as a critical, a P1? 
because it could potentially affect every user of the website? No. Imagine you open another browser and navigate to example.com slash public and unitize your XSS payload executes again. Why the payload script alert isn't even there? This happened because the caching mechanisms ignores query parameters. They are not included in the cache key. As a result, it stores the response for any valid URL like example.com slash public and some query param and maybe example.com slash public and another query param. If this happens, you are very lucky. It's not common but it's a great example to understand how this works. In a more realistic scenario, this could happen if once you find the XSX, you search for a way to store it in the cache. This means you'd need to find a route where your XSS works and where query parameters aren't part of the cache key. Example 2. Finding XSS in an input not included in the request path. Another example, which is less rare, is finding an XSS in an input that isn't part of the request path. This could happen if a header in any HTTP method reflects back in the response. An input from the body of a POST request is reflected in the response. How can this have an impact in the response isn't cached? You need to find a way to store in the cache. But how do you perform cache poisoning? You need to investigate what type of responses are cached by your target and try to replicate the request for those responses. But how? For example, if you notice that .jpeg files are cached, you can try adding that extension to the end of your request with the XSS and look for a cache hit response. Identify the routes that are cached and perform path traversal in your request with the XSS to trick the caching mechanisms into storing it as if it were for those path, typically a static file path. There are many techniques for this. You can find more details in Port Swigger Academy and in this video description. Another method I have had success with this first. Identify responses you know are already cached too. Once you've identified them, perform fusing on headers and parameters find one that reflects back. This technique typically requires three steps. Find a request that is stored in the cache. Find an input that reflects in the response. And bypass protection to execute your XSS. Example number three. Storing a self XSS in a cache due to poor cache configuration. This example is a bit tricky, but you can find it if you pay close attention. It involves a self XSS that, due to poor cache configuration, can be stored in the cache. Let's take the example of the node field from earlier. In this case, we can't exploit it with cross eye request forgery, but we notice that it's possible to store this information in the cache. How? Adding a static file extension or by playing with path until you manage to store in the cache. Perhaps by using a web cache deception technique, adding a static file extension like .js, CSS, JPG, and others, or by playing with pad until you're managed to store it in the cache. Let me show an example. By appending 
a JS extension to the request, the server might treat it as a static file and store the response in the cache. This turns what was initially a self XSS into a store XSS that can now affect all users accessing the cached file. Remember that the description contains more information about the extension or path confusion to test. Okay, remember to review your XSS, demonstrate or escalate its impact and report it. And be creative. Cheers, hackers.